ரோஹித் for inviting me for this uh, uh, presentation on marine panjai i have deliberately selected the contributions to marine panjai from mangalore university uh, basically um, i started my research with uh, freshwater panjai in 1978 and continued for one full decade on freshwater panjai panjai uh, subsequently after my postdoctoral studies i switched over to marine panjai along with freshwater panjai and then i have started working on some of the uh, when i roaming uh, on the coastal sand dunes i found some legumes and started working on nutritional aspects of uh, legumes am i audible hello yes yes sir you are clearly yeah. audible sir yeah so another decade it was on nutrition and uh, nutraceutical potential of some of the wild legumes and 2011 onwards uh, i have started working on macro fungi and uh, still i continue my freshwater fungi marine fungi mangrove fungi and also nutritional aspect and also macro fungi like that i have a heavy load of uh, these things uh, in my agenda uh, i am thankful to dr sharma he has given a very general a very broad account of uh, marine fungi and i need not necessary to touch upon those aspects and fungi uh, as you are uh, very well uh, aware that it is uh, ubiquitous uh, eukaryotes and uh, marine habitats occupied more than 70% of their surface therefore it is a very potential ecosystem to evaluate fungal association and marine fungi is a vital link in decomposer food chain in marine food web and uh, they have a lot of adaptability and uh, evolved uh, in marine habitats and grow and sporulate in marine ecosystems and symbiotically associated with several uh, symbiotically uh, associated with marine organisms maybe plants uh, sea grasses sea weeds animals and so on and so forth so there are several ecosystems uh, marine fungi occupy in marine habitats that is water is one of the principal uh, <clears throat> uh the system ecosystem they occupy rocky shores are common and the coastal sand dunes are the region where marine fungi flourish mangroves and uh, mangrove canopy especially tree holes of mangrove canopy also possess certain type of uh, fungi some of them are marine estuaries and uh, harbors and also islands these are the the, the general ecosystem of uh, marine fungi and with regard to substrates uh, dr sharma has already mentioned about the substrates wood litter and fixed wood introduced wood we can deliberately introduce certain type of wood and see what happens to the wood material in the in the ocean what is the degradation pattern and such things leaf litter um, can be natural leaf litter or one can introduce the leaf litter and see what happens to this leaf litter uh, in marine ecosystem or mangrove ecosystem and also available animal substrates or animal remains like uh, shells and uh, keratin materials and uh, exoskeletons um, all such things and sediments are the sources and foam is another location where we can uh, where we can find lot of spores of uh, marine fungi and live parts of seaweeds sea grasses and mangroves Uh, where endophytic fungi are going to associate uh, dr surinarayan is going to talk about that and uh, estuarine region uh, estuarine conditions and uh, in estuarine and mangrove sedges there are a lot of uh, different types of sedges are available uh, in the estuarine and mangrove ecosystem and they contribute a lot of, uh, as organic matter for the growth of uh, uh, marine fungi and uh, their perpetuation uh, tree holes substrates lot of uh, substrates accumulate in the tree holes of mangroves and they also uh, possess certain marine fungi fungi uh, similarly we can think of uh, stem flow and through fall through the canopy 
uh, bark and uh, leaves, etc. They also support the marine fungi and, of course, other fungi too. Uh, there are so several approaches to study mangrove mycology. Uh, that is, mangroves uh, either pure or mixed stands. And uh, you can look for various types of uh, mangroves, untouched. Of course, we may not find any untouched uh, mangroves, but at least some up to some extent it is definitely disturbed, impoverished, many rejuvenated, some of them polluted, of course, many young ones, if it is rejuvenating life. And uh, one can look for zonation, vertical zonation, and also horizontal zonation. Uh, with regard to substrates, we can think of live and dead. And uh, among these, some of them are stable, some of them are fragile. So the stable ones, branches, wood, or, uh, roots, and animal remains. And fragile ones, leaves, inflorescence, bark, twigs, roots, rhizomes, seeds, seedlings, grass, sedges, seagrass, ferns, lichens, animal remains. Like. And there are other substrates like sand, because many Aranicolus fungi grow on sand, a soil, a silt, scum, and foam. These are all other substrates. So considering these mangroves and also different types of substrates, we can think of fungal activity, how fungi can uh, associate with this type of mangroves as well as mangrove substrates. We can look for colonization, look for diversity, distribution, uh, competition among different fungi, pattern of decomposition of organic material, um, uh, biomass accumulation and the transport of biomass to higher trophic levels, um, different types of metabolites that is produced by marine fungi, and also how they are helpful in energy flow to the higher trophic level. So these are many some of the approaches. Uh, then let us go to the specific uh, studies, what we have done so far for the last uh, uh, almost 30 years, 1970, uh, 1992 onwards, we started working on marine fungi, but uh, nowadays not very much active on marine fungi, but still we have some publications here and there on marine fungi. So we worked on diversity and distribution in different habitats, marine habitats, mangrove habitats, and estuarine habitats, as saprophytes, endophytes, and also their vertical distribution. Uh, decomposition, is another task we took, uh, decomposition of wood material, uh, that is natural wood and also introduced wood, and uh, decomposition of leaf litter, that is naturally occurring leaf litter in the mangrove ecosystem, and also uh, the introduced leaf material. Uh, maybe uh, we can think of uh, uh, fallen, uh, just uh, uh, fresh leaf material that is yellow in color, and also the dried material. Because in the canopy, what happens? Uh, some of the leaves are trapped and it will dry, and afterwards it enters into the ocean or the mangrove. In some cases, what happens? The, the fresh leaves, yellow leaves, will also enter into the, the mangrove ecosystem and then it starts decomposing. And how these organisms are responsible for, uh, for uh, decomposition and uh, how transfer the energy to the higher trophic level, like that. Other fungi in marine habitats, I'm not very sure whether I can discuss about this because a lot of orbuscular mycorrhizae uh, exists in the coastal sand dunes uh, with the association with the plants, what we find in the coastal sand dunes. Similarly, a lot of macrofungi are there in mangroves, coastal sand dunes as well as mangroves, even orbuscular mycorrhizae, coastal sand dunes and mangroves, and a lot of endophytes, endophytes in coastal sand dune uh, plants and also with mangrove habitats. Uh, see, this is uh, uh, what we did was uh, woody material present on the coastal sand dune is, has, will, will be exposed for a long time and therefore it is almost dried and uh, still it has some fungi and such type of material when we collect, uh, it has to be incubated for a long period and many occasions we may not have much patience to incubate for a long period because I have shown you here a number of months of incubation, zero months to 18 months. And even there are some papers, they, they have incubated more than two years. So periodically, they are checking the isolation uh, presence of fungi. So we can get a lot of fungi after six months of incubation. And especially marine 
ecosystem you have to incubate at least for one year and then subsequently if you do it for two years it is excellent and for mangrove ecosystem since it is a little bit wet condition uh, maybe six months to eight months or up to 12 months will be okay so you can see a number of species here in the, in the initial collection from the coastal sand dunes two months six that is six months 39 species 12 months 37 species 18 months 25 species it will continue like that and the percent you, and also you can see six months it has given 66.1 percent with highest simpson and shannon diversity and di diversity also varies for a period of uh, incubation like period of incubation of uh, driftwood uh, collected from coastal sand dunes is very very important and by that it is possible to assess the fungal association in total rather than partial uh, observation so for the sake of publishing a paper we want to incubate for two or two months and then we may uh, get a lot of vd fungi and report like that so that is not really good especially for a marine for marine mycological studies uh, although there are some terrestrial fungi there are typical uh, facultative and also uh, the obligate marine fungi we can get it for, for prolonged incubation as uh, sharma was mentioning uh, so this is another picture showing fungi on prolonged incubation on wood. So this is, we have done for two years, that is 92 and 93. So this is cumulative species. So the, this is the incubation period, 20 months. And this is how the total number of species are increase, increasing. And the exclusive species, they, they found a particular point of time a few species increasing and subsequently they are decreasing exclusively found in particular month of incubation and some of them are total species the total number of species this much like so similarly the pattern is almost similar to the second year that is 1993 and this is the total species and the exclusive species and if you consider some of the uh, fungi uh, specific fungi, for example, Aniptodera chesapeckensis. So Aniptodera chesapeckensis keep on increasing its frequency of occurrence to the level of uh, 15 or more than 15 to 20 range like that. And the same thing happens with regard to uh, Torpedos for a radiator. It is less here and then keep on increasing. Whereas Ericula inalia, it is attaining higher level at the the 12th month and then subsequently it get reduced. So in the second year, what happened? So Aniptotre chisapacensis, though not up to this extent, it has raised and showing a sort of increasing trend. Whereas uh, another species that is uh, the Corospora maritima showing increasing trend and Corospora angusta has come down like that. So therefore, it is uh, not that the total number of species and exclusive species and cumulative species may give a different picture and each species may have different features altogether depending upon the substrate what we have collected material from different regions that therefore the the incubation is up to 18 months here and uh, then um, in some cases we have incubated up to two years and some of them more than two years like so now uh, what is the, uh, it is uh, the mangrove ecosystem is a consortium of several fungi. So not terrestrial fungi, aranicolous fungi, and also typical marine fungi. Of course, aranicolous fungi, also marine fungi, like that. And we have taken two different uh, uh, mangrove ecosystems, Netravati mangroves and also Udhyavara mangrove in Karnataka. And this is about the terrestrial fungi uh, for eight uh, weeks incubation it has shown maximum and then it has come down whereas marine fungi is showing a sort of increase and then almost plateau like whereas aranicolous fungi it has very low in number and keep on increasing like that so the trend is more or less similar because it is higher in tertial and then come down marine fungi are plenty in udyavara uh, mangrove and then Aranicolous fungi is increasing, like so. Aranicolous fungi are sand-loving fungi. They grow on sand material, 
and they produce the ascocarp and then they protect themselves. I don't know how exactly they protect because sand is always moving, but still I will come to that point sometime later. Similarly, uh, if, if you look into the woody litter, this is on leaf litter, this is on leaf litter, whereas woody litter, woody litter, the marine fungi are showing a sort of increase that is 16 weeks of incubation and it is plateau, whereas as usual, tertiary fungi coming down, whereas Aranicolas fungi showing increment. Then similarly, Udhyavara woody litter also more or less similar pattern we can see with regard to uh, the marine fungi and uh, terrestrial fungi and also Aranicolas fungi. So this gives an idea that uh, although terrestrial fungi are there in mangrove ecosystem, uh, over a period of time their activity will come down, their uh, sporulated uh, number of species will come down uh, after prolonged incubation. Whereas we can find some different species of marine fungi and also Aranicolas fungi subsequently. Uh, now we can look for the diversity of uh, in mangrove wood material. We have collected mangrove wood material from several locations, uh, starting from uh, Malwan, uh, from Maharashtra, Panaji, from Goa, uh, then Karwar, uh, then Gangavadi, Honavar, Karnataka region, Kundapura, Mulki, Talapadi, Kumble, and Velapatna. Is uh, Kumble is in Kerala and Velapatna is in Kerala. So the, some 10 mangroves have been studied and they have given a sort of expected number of species uh, depending the, based on number of isolations. And if you work out the expected number of species, it will give a sort of curve which is going to provide us some information how they, whether the condition is similar in all cases or it is uh, impoverished or it is still in different state because in many occasions what happens once 150 species isolation it will be truncated it will not uh, give any more like but some of them are extended so here this is uh, uh, from uh, malwan so the number is less but it is for a prolonged period up to more than 200 225 uh, isolations we get more uh, very close to more than 20 species like whereas here so this is uh, kundapur i think it is kundapur where uh, the number is very high that is more more than 30 species and up to 200 isolations it has given this much like so this is a yardstick where we can assess the mangrove ecosystem based on uh, their the substrate capacity to produce or uh, to uh, uh, show us some of the species associated with the substrates. Uh, then let us uh, look into the uh, diversity of uh, different uh, diversity of fungi in different mangrove wood material collected in different seasons. So if you look into the season, uh, we have collected this during monsoon season and also summer season. So in all these uh, plant species like Acanthus silicifolius, Brugeria gymnoriza, Sonaracea cassiolaris, Avicinia officinalis, Rhizophora mucronata. So all of them showed monsoon, whatever the wood material collected during monsoon showed higher number of uh, expected number of species in all cases. And the summer season collection showed little bit less like that. So it is uh, the, this, this may be due to different reasons because my, Rainy season may be more congenial for them because salinity may come down and other organisms may, fungi may colonize and ultimately it is possible to assist, uh, to get more number of species during the monsoon. So this is the trend with collecting different types of uh, material, woody material uh, from different season uh, and then look for the expected number of species. It is a part of diversity study. So then you can also look for seasonal fluctuations of fungi. Seasonal fluctuations of fungi on Avicinia officinalis and Rhizophora micronata wood material. So this is uh, this panel is for the Avicinia officinalis, and you can see that August month the total number of species is highest, and the Myrtosporic fungi is highest at August, and the total number of species uh, were highest 
in the month of December. So it is a little bit uh, sort of after post monsoon season like that. So this is uh, the number of species obtained on woody material that is uh, the Avicennia avicinalis. Uh, the total number of fungi per wood. So this is per wood. How, how many fungi per wood? Average number of fungi. And also core group species. Core group species were highest during August month. And I think this is going to corroborate with our earlier finding that the rainy season or the wet season is going to provide uh, that is more number of species exist. Similarly, the rhizoformicronata pattern is also more or less similar during August. And here it is August and also it is going showing January. That is the dry season also. The core group species are more like that. So why I am projecting this core group species? Because the core group species are the one they are very important because they are in highest uh, in frequency of occurrence and also they play a major role compared to that of uh, other uh, fungi. And again, you can also think of uh, some of the keystone species among the core group fungi. Uh, so let us uh, look into the diversity and distribution of endophytic fungi. Uh, of course, uh, Surinaran is going to talk about that, but I'm not going to touch more upon this. But uh, if you look into the diversity and distribution of uh, endophytic fungi, I'm not thinking about the terrestrial region. There are so many um, um, uh, ecosystems, forest trees, medicinal plants, ferns, orchids, and lichens like that. Aquatic, you can think of fresh water, lotic, lentic, and marshes, freshwater marshes. And if you think of uh, uh, marine waters, estuarine and coral reefs, mangroves, salt marshes, sand dunes, seagrass, and also seaweed. These are all the, the substrates where fungi can colonize the live material and, uh, uh, and also they symbiotically live with them without uh, uh, disease symptoms. And probably they may support the growth of uh, um, the plants and also they have their own role with regard to their symbiotic association. Uh, so this is uh, a chart showing endophytic fungi in coastal sand dunes. So in coastal sand dunes, we can find several plant species. So some of the species include Ipomia biloba, earlier it used to, uh, to call Ipomia pescaprae, Lavonia sarmentosa, and uh, Poly Polycarpia corimbosa. So these are the three plants we have analyzed. And these are very common on the coastal sand dunes of Mangalore. And uh, we have used two methods, that is plating method and also damp incubation method. So the, we have taken the uh, leaf material and it is surface sterilized properly and then incubated. So incubation, we have made plating and damp incubation. So among this plating and damp incubation, plating has given more number of species and it is extended. Whereas damp incubation, we can find very few of them, not many many that is expected number of species same thing is true with the lavonia sarmentosa and also uh, with regard to this uh, uh, polycarpia corimbosa in fact uh, polycarpia corimbosa uh, is uh, uh, is very interesting plant small plant but it has it harbor varieties of uh, endophytic fungi uh, coming to this uh, endophytic fungal association with the uh, coastal sand dune plants uh, we have studied Canavillia cathartica and Canavillia maritima. These two are the legumes uh, commonly present in the... There are several, maybe uh, 20 to 25 different legumes are present in the coastal sand dunes of Karnataka. And many of them are uh, versatile and also they are useful uh, industrially. And some of them are edible. Cathartica and maritima are edible. The seeds are edible and some of them are producing some pigments and like that there are so many advantages so here we studied the endophytic fungi in the coastal sand dunes so we took seed seedling and mature plant so this is one plant that is cathartica another one is canavillia maritima so here the mature plant showed more number of uh, species compared to seedling and also the seed whereas 
the same the conditions are same for cathartic and maritima because in the co same coastal sand dune and same edophic features and same climatic conditions but it has seedling showed more number of species compared to the mature plant as usual the seed has less number of species so then we studied endophytic fungal association with cotyledon seed coat root stem and leaf so when we studied that leaves showed very highest number of species so i have already mentioned that both the species are occurring in the same ecological e ecosystem with edophic factors and also climatic conditions and so both of them showed leaf the highest and then followed by uh, the stem and then uh, the roots are comparatively less and cotyledon and seed coat were very very less number like that as we see in here like that so this is uh, the pattern what we saw in case of uh, endophytic fungi in coastal sand dunes um, so now uh, diversity of endophytic fungi in roots of uh, uh, regifera mucronata uh, in mangroves so we when we studied uh, endophytic fungi in four different plant species avicennia elusive that is acanthus elusivolius avicennia officinalis rhizophora mucronata and sonoracea cassiolaris so this rhizophora mucronata showed the highest number of uh, endophytic fungi that is expected number of species followed by avicennia officinalis and then sonoracea uh, then probably it is the avicin the acanthus elis policy is almost merged here right? uh, then we look for uh, what is the uh, whether this uh, endophytic fungi are high in different uh, tide levels that is low tide mid tide and high tide so we collected the endophytic fungi from the whole root segments uh, available at low tide mid tide and high tide so interestingly, the mid tide showed the highest number of endophytic association compared to low tide as well as the high tide. So this is one of the patterns of uh, occurrence of uh, endophytic fungi in Rhizophora mucronata root samples. So let us look into uh, the number of fungal species in woody uh, and uh, leaf litter, wood, wood and leaf, woody litter and, and leaf litter in mangroves so most of the situations what we assume that uh, so if you take a wood material how many species are colonized so single species single species the number of fungal taxa that is one species it has colonized 20 percent of the leaf material 20 percent of the more than 20 percent of the uh, woody material like that and the highest number is Three species colonization. Three species are occurring uh, in woody material and leaf material. That is the highest. That is the highest. That is more maybe 30, 35 species. Right? That is around 25 species on the woody material. In leaf material it is highest like. So many occasions, what happens? Uh, this is three species. Do they really cooperate with each other? Are they are? Are they are? Um, competing with each other that is the question and and if you look into the woody material one two three four five six seven eight species are occurring per wood material per wood material eight species in one wood material like that. so therefore there may be some competition or there may be some possibilities of because of such competition they may produce some metabolites and such type of things but whereas the leaf material is almost truncated at five species, not more than five species. Probably it may be, it is fragile. Right? So let us look into another picture where it is, we have collected the woody material uh, that is natural, naturally occurring woody material in the mangroves and also introduced wood material. We have deliberately introduced wood material. And... <clears throat> So the here, so here is again same situation, one, two, three, four, up to nine species. So the nine species were found on during during summer period. So this is very small, maybe one species like that. But whereas the monsoon period is almost 
seven species it is, it is the maximum here so the introduced wood so here see this these are two species colonization is highest uh, that is in summer as well as monsoon natural wood introduced wood so the one species dominance is highest in wood introduced that is one wood and uh, in case in uh, monsoon season in summer season two species dominance is highest that is up to close to 40 species right so then uh, overall occurrence if you think of so this is uh, the monsoon period and this is summer period summer period showed more number of uh, species uh, that is overall occurrence and here it is monsoon period and uh, that is overall occurrence in summer period and three species dominance is slightly more here in summer and this is monsoon season this is summer season it is it is more here in summer season so more or less they are showing a little bit higher in first in the uh, first year in the second year it is uh, it is slightly different like so that is uh, the summer is more pronounced like so so my question is uh, this type of uh, two three species eight species nine species occurring on same wood material and definitely there will be some competition and such type of things will happen and we have to test them uh, more meticulously to understand their ecological features so let us pass on to uh, the next uh, study that is wood decomposition so we actually decomposition study in india is very less not much and we have introduced alcine uh, alcinalis wood material and also rhizophora micronita wood material for a long time so for the purpose of uh, finding this is the raw material this is a wood material zero that day and then one year after one year see the nature of wood material it is all the bark has gone up uh, removed and this is avicina officinalis and this is uh, uh, the 18 months of incubation in the mangrove so this is rhizophora micronata uh, zero uh, months and this is the uh, 12 months see 12 months it is almost uh, digested see here all everything has gone and this is 18 months it is almost uh, very maybe more less than 50 percent is uh, uh, occurring so therefore the the extent of de degradation or decomposition of woody material in the ocean or in the mangrove ecosystem is very very important to transfer the uh, organic that is the energy to the higher trophic level as well as uh, with regard to uh, replenish that is rejuvenating or the with regard to biogeochemical cycle so whatever nitrogen is locked up here whatever phosphorus is locked up here has to be transferred to the trophic level where, where many organisms are going to uh, utilize that uh, dr shanai i'm audible is it okay hello sir you are audible please continue sir. okay okay thank you so now see when you look for this type of uh, decomposition physically how this wood is going to change its st structure and you, you can also look for, for what happens to the mass loss so if you take mass here mass here mass here unit weight wet weight and dry weight then you can find lot of differences the percent ashery dry moss that is remaining over a period of time this is the monsoon period and dry period monsoon period and dry period so this you can really imagine that if we have incubated up to mostly around 18 months or so like see the first year what happened more or less it has followed similar pattern so 100 percent very little bit below 80 percent uh, especially in case of revisionalis but although rhizophora micronita is fragile although fragile its bio mass is uh, 85 percent or so 80, 80 or 85 percent so once the first year is over in second year period you can see a steep decrease in the in the mass loss so this is where entire material will be utilized in the second year and if you remove the wood what happens so there is no wood at all available there and also it, the energy will be lost so the extraction of wood is one of the major problem in uh, mangrove ecosystem 
and whatever energy they produce that will not be available for the higher trophic level and here see the how steep they are although it is very not so steep here in the second year it is very very steep like both the oxygenalis and also raise for a mucronate so this type of study will give us an idea about the nature of mangrove ecosystem and also their capability to transfer energy or decompose organic material so let us look into same one material so this is uh, the ash free dry moss how much degrading see some of them will fast degrading or this is slow degrading like so the nitrogen content is going to increase around somewhere between uh, 80 to 100 days 100 uh, days of uh, incubation that means this is highly enriched with nitrogen and where organisms are going to encash it like and then it decreases whereas with regard to phosphorus the phosphorus content will be initially high in both the cases and it decreases and it increases that means the the material wood material is going to catch a lot of phosphorus in there and this phosphorus is very very useful for the organisms that is living in mangrove ecosystem <laughs> Similarly, this is on wood and this is on leaf material. When you take leaf material, I have mentioned that some of the leaves will be trapped in the canopy and uh, some of them will be fresh, yellow and like, get into the estuarine condition. Some of them in dried condition, they enter into the system and see here how they, the mass loss takes place. So again, it is mimicking almost similar to that of wood, but not as much as wood material both of them are decreasing at 60 days after 60 days the because it is very fragile compared to a uh, woody material and second part it is very steep like and if you look into the ergosterol content ergosterol is content is a measure for the filamentous fungi and around uh, 30 days of uh, incubation in the in the mangrove ecosystem highest ergosterol we can see that Similarly, the nitrogen content differs between fresh and dried. So the dried one is going to uh, accumulate more and more of uh, nitrogen, whereas uh, the fresh one is going to lose this. It is opposing each other. Similarly, the phosphorus content is increasing and uh, it reaches high, very close to 56 days of incubation, uh, whereas the, uh, the fresh, uh, the dried leaves are going to attain not so much, but at the at 100 very close to that of 96 days or 100 days like that so the pattern of uh, decomposition of fresh and dried leaves varies um, depending upon the ecosystem depending upon the pollution status depending upon the organism they are surviving and depending upon the uh, water quality and such things let us pass on to another uh, area of research what we have carried out and there is one side type of set known as cypress melasensis it is an estuarine set. So at a distance, you can see a sort of uh, groove-like thing, uh, and it is grown like that, and uh, the sedge. And uh, this is the close-up view of the sedge. And during monsoon season, it looks like this. And during summer season, everything will dry up. And uh, the, this, uh, the, the upper region, whatever the biomass that is built up here, it will be oppressed to the water because of waves and other reason, uh, maybe wind and such things. But interestingly, the sedge has rhizome. The rhizome is perennial, but the above ground biomass, it is going to, it's seasonal. It is going to produce this and then it will die. And this dead material is put for a type of snail known as telescopium telescopium. So you might have seen this telescopium telescopium in many mangroves and these are the one they are depending upon the cypress melasensis dead material. And that's how the energy will flow from sedge to the snail, and snail is going to flourish and establish. So now we have studied uh, the vertical distribution. What happens? So if you take a natural mature plant and study different regions like bracts, this is the upper stem, this is the middle stem, and the lower stem, and the rhizome. So the, the, the fungal association differs drastically. Physarium oxysporum in both. Physarium oxysporum, is, it is a common. Physarium oxysporum is very common. 
Trichoderma harzianum can be found here. Mucor is here. And this Caesarium oxysporum is there. And Trichoderma harzianum is here. Cladosporium is here. Like that, the vertical, the, the fungal association in natural uh, material uh, differs from rhizome to bracts. Similarly, if you surface sterilize such type of regions like bracts and then middle stem, lower stem and uh, rhizome, so the, the aspergillus and penicillium aspergillus uh, species like that, Negrospora varize, Pestlosia and uh, Trichoderma harzianum, penicillin. So they, they differs like that. That means this fungi are surviving within the sedge as endo endophytically they survive and they may support the plant for their growth and other things. Whereas these are maybe surfaced, we may, probably they may, we may not get more of endophytic fungi here, but surface, whatever is there, it might have grown, but some endophyte also may be there. But out of curiosity, we have studied the vertical distribution, whether there is any difference and such things. So when we studied the decomposition of Cypress melasensis, I have already addressed why yeah, decomposition is very, very important. So see here, see we have basal stem, top stem, and bract. So the basal stem, top stem, and bract. And when we look into the decomposition pattern, mass remaining is uh, highest uh, in case of uh, top stem. That is 50% mass loss at uh, eight weeks period. Here, 50% mass loss will be somewhere around 5.5 uh, months weeks period, whereas the brats are very fragile and they, they around uh, around three weeks duration, 50% mass loss took place. So when we studied the fungal association, the number of fungi, so the basal stem harbors maximum and top stem almost similar and whereas bract has very less because it is truncated here because it is not going to stay for a long time because it is very fragile like and the number of uh, fungi uh, total number of fungi also showed a sort of pattern between one week to eight week duration see here one peak second peak third peak like first peak second peak and third peak with regard to terrestrial fungi this is the total fungi this is the marine fungi marine fungi see here marine fungi are Literally, they are increasing in number from start zero to eight, eight weeks. Like that, marine fungi show a different pattern. Terrestrial fungi show a different pattern with regard to association with the cypress melasensis. So if you look into the nutrient dynamics of cypress melasensis, phosphorus is high. I think I have shown you. And again, it is it has come down and again reached the height. Like, um, <clears throat> because this is how the phosphorus is going to uh, play an important role. Whereas phenolics, uh, total phenolics, total phenolics or phenolics are water soluble and it decreases. See here how the difference will be there with regard to different types of uh, basal stem, top stem, and also bract. Bract is going to truncate here itself because it will not stay more than four weeks duration in water. Uh, then if you look into the nutrient and nutrient uh, and enzyme dynamics of cypress melasensis the organic carb organic carbon uh, that is, uh, is up to 18 to 16 to 18 uh, percent here it is 12 percent decreasing so it is obvious organic carbon is decreasing and nitrogen is increasing attaining highest at eight week duration whereas cn ratio is decreasing so this when when cn ratio is decreasing means whatever nitrogen is there it is available for the organisms so if it is not decreasing means it is locked up it is not available for the organism to encash so if you look into the enzymes cellulase so surprisingly four week duration basal stem showed highest uh, cellulase activity and uh, here it is at the eight week duration so that is top stem bract is going to it is showing one week first peak and second peak like both of them like then, so the xylanase activity or hemicellulase activity was highest uh, in fourth week. And then here it is uh, bract, it is uh, first week. And here it is the fourth week again for the top stem. And with regard to pectinase, 
it is a steep increase. So here is the highest in case of uh, basal stem, and here it is uh, for the for the uh, for the bract, it is the fourth week, and here for the uh, mid top stem, it is around. Uh, Two weeks period like that. These are the enzymes that they are changing over a period of time, and it shows that how dynamic with regard to their activity is concerned. Uh, I am not very sure whether I can include this or not. There are several orbuscular mycorrhizal fungi have been reported from the coastal sand dunes. So this uh, what we did was we collected some of the plants of the coastal sand dunes, and uh, uh, <clears throat> so we. We we found um, orbuscular mycorrhizal fungi is highest in moderately disturbed dunes rather than severely disturbed dunes. Similarly, uh, dry season and wet season. Dry season showed more number of orbuscular mycorrhizal fungi compared to that of the best wet, wet season. So the Connell hypothesis in 1978 says that. So if you increase the biodiversity, ecosystem services increases, drastically increases. When biodiversity increases, ecosystem services also increases. When you plot this diversity against the level of disturbance, if the level of disturbance is very low, the diversity will be less. If the level of disturbance is too high, the, num uh, the, uh, the diversity will be low. A moderate disturbance is the one where we can get maximum diversity can be attained. So this is applicable to this here. Moderately disturbed dunes are showing very, very much, uh, very several number of species and the highest number of species compared to severely disturbed dunes. Right? So therefore, we uh, we did this work for the arboscular mycorrhizae. So these arboscular mycorrhizae also found in mangrove ecosystem, and these are all the deris. It is a legume, Rhizo, Rhizophora mucronata, Canavillia cathartica, another legume, Acanthus thalicifolius, Cypress melasensis, what we have uh, looked recently, Acrostichum arium, Spinifex litorius, and Sonaracea alba. So this is the pattern, starting from deris triflorium, deris triflorum to Cypress melasins. Cypress melasins has less number of arboscular mycorrhizae compared to that of the risk. Right? And the number of spores per 25 gram uh, dry moss uh, or wet moss of the mangrove. So this is the pattern where this is, the, this is the number of spores per 25 gram. And whereas here it is species per 25 gram. So this is these are the arboscular mycorrhizae present on the coastal sand dunes as well as uh, the mangroves. So there are several macrophagi occur in coastal sand dunes. So the, here we have taken five different uh, mangrove ecosystem, uh, coastal sand dunes, and highest number can be seen in Somishara region. Right. And irrespective of this, if you look into the season, June, July, August, September, October, wet season. So June is the month where we can get maximum number of uh, uh, macrophagi. And it is uh, it is extending like you know, that shows a sort of increasing trend with regard to presence of macrophagi in different coastal sand dunes. Uh, with regard to substrate preference, so the macrophagi uh, sandy soil is preferred, most preferred, followed by woody material and other material like leaf litter, soil and leaf litter and twigs, soil, <coughs> dung, grass, and other things. So again, it is edible ones are highest, uh, followed by medicinal and ectomycorrhizal almost, and edible ectomycorrhizal and uh, edible and edible and medicinal edible metro ectomycorrhizal. So these are some of the pictures where we got some uh, macrophagi in the coastal sand dunes. Um, this is Amanita species because we, there were some um, termite mounds where they were there. And like that, there are many species. Right? Uh, we have got uh, this Amanita conagensis uh, associated with the acacia tree there, and uh, other type of species like you know, uh, the Pleurotus type of species and other species were the Dacaropianax and such type of species were seen. So the man macrophagi in mangroves, when we take uh, five different uh, mangrove ecosystem, one of them showed highest number. What do we? Then 
other species are decreasing like this is per quadrat but quadrat and total that is the sporocarps decreasing almost similar way and the sporocarps if you take different seasons the sporocarp is highest in september first peak and second peak like that so this is the per quadrat whereas this expected number of species is uh, giving an idea that the this particular the, the sassy flu is the region where it has given highest but truncated around around 40 uh, that is for cups like and whereas this is extended for the flu like and whereas the uh, june in the month of june we can find highest number of uh, spore cups and whereas uh, in the month of september it has extended further like that you know, this is the pattern of uh, uh, macrophagi found in that again macrophagi are maximum in coastal sand dunes and wood followed by soil and followed by leaf litter and even wood can be classified into fine medium and coarse woody material fine woody material will have less number of species compared to medium and coarse coarse wood material is very very important for growth of macrophagi so these are the macrophagi we found in mangroves. So this is in, with regard to mangroves, and these are all <coughs> Amanoderma <coughs> and Dacaria pinax, and uh, this is an Amanita species, and uh, Ganoderma-like species, and uh, varieties of other species have been seen in the mangrove ecosystem. And very recently, we conducted a study on canopy in tree holes. So, Dr. Shanai, uh, am I across the limit of time? Yes. You, may, you might take uh, maybe five to ten more, ten more minutes. Yeah, yeah, five minutes, five minutes. Yeah, uh, should be in three holes. So, this is uh, Rhizophora mucronata, uh, sorry, uh, Avicina officinalis canopy, and this is a tree hole. You can see the tree hole. So, tree hole ecosystem is a very interesting ecosystem where we can find a lot of organisms, not only fungi, we can find a lot of invertebrates, we can find a lot of uh especially insects and uh, honeybees and so many things like so this is the uh, rhizophora mucronata and this is the tree hole of that and when we studied uh, the uh, tree holes uh, we have taken material from tree hole water from tree hole and studied leaf litter from tree hole we have studied and also from canopy we have collected the water that is dripping down from the canopy and also we have collected the bark flow Whatever uh, rainy season, whatever it passed through, passed through the bark has been collected and then studied the spores. So if you look into this picture, you will find varieties of organisms. Like So this is a typical freshwater fungi, like a lettuce for accumulator. And one, two, three, four, uh, and even, yeah, this, this four species are dwayangum species, commonly found in freshwaters. And uh, you can also see some of the helicosporous type of species. And you can also see this is Nia, that is the basidiomycete, marine basidiomycete. And we have also seen some of the Corlospora species in uh, in this study. So this is a sort of mosaic of uh, freshwater and uh, terrestrial and also marine species are found as spores. You know, this is Tetraploma aristata. Uh, usually it is a terrestrial one, airborne or whatever. In the field we can find it like that so these are all the the fungal spores found in the canopy region and we have erected uh, two or three species of marine fungi one is corrospora indica on crab exoskeleton so when we look into i'm sorry for this bad picture not very good uh, so these are all ascocarp that is arenicolus uh, that is fungi that grown on that and uh, so these are the spores uh, protruded like this and this uh, the pictures so we erected as for for indica on crab exoskeleton even other plant material also we uh, that is the animal materials and even sand also we found this and another species we recently found in the monocot wood so these are the monocot wood so especially aranicolous uh, fungi prefer sand grime to establish their ascopar but we have deliberately collected some of the monocot wood so this is uh, coconut bark. This is coconut inflorescence. This coconut root, and this is uh, bamboo, uh, like bamboo uh, fig. 
and uh, so this is some grass uh, material that is like maize like material is available in the dune and what happens especially with regard to such type of bamboo uh, material there will be a, a hole will be there a tunnel will be there so because of this tunnel uh, the uh, the arenicos fungi very very safely housed with inside and when we take such type of wood material we have to dissect it and open it and see whether there is any arenicos fungi surprisingly we found one arenicos fungus probably it is arenariomyces species you can see the appendages the horn like appendages here uh, when we press the as per but we are yet to establish we assume that it may be a new species not matching with many arenicola species reported and we have also reported uh, one fungus that is passerinella mangrovii new species on decaying wood of avicennia officinalis so this is the, the ascocarp growing ascocarp the tip of the ascocarp and section of that and this is the assai with the eight spores and these are the spores of uh, uh, passerinella mangrovii uh, and future work if you look into the uh, work what i personally feel that obligate facultative and extremophilic fungi has to be worked out and nutritional medicinal and nutraceutical values are very important and uh, fungal unique enzymes and metabolites are very useful as the previous speaker was mentioning nutrient turnover and energy flow to higher trophic levels is very important uh, and in the scenario of the climate change because we are uh, we are misusing ocean like anything and the maritime habitats like anything in that context uh, we have to find out whether the ecosystem is impoverished whether it is rejuvenated whether it is uh, uh, <clears throat> progressing in a uh, beneficial way or detrimental or whatever assessment of unique ecological functions in the climate change scenario and also pollution abatement and bioremediation is also very very important using some of these organisms how to think of this situation and other bio prospect potential has to be looked into uh, i'm thankful to you uh, all for patient listening and uh, i'm thankful to the want of biosciences mangalore university and the support by my question and my india and a lot of students have worked with me uh, and also whatever wild ideas i used to get i used to uh, power on him, them and oh well, let us go and see that see, see this like that so these are all my students prasanna rai anand kulal maria lobo karanchand uh, sudeep Fate, sudeep another sudeep from kerala Arun Bhagwat, Bhagya Sharma, Sina Sahadevan, and Melvin Dikuna. All these people work invariably one way or the other on marine, not marine associated fungi. And I thank the organizers who invite me for their invitation to present my work. And uh, instead of uh, um, explaining something else, I have projected our own work for the last 30 years on marine fungi. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Shridhar. I hope I'm audible to you. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you so, very much. Uh, it is, it is, uh, it has always been a pleasure listening to you since 2000. Since uh, I was uh, when I was a uh, MSc student, and uh, I think I will let the audience uh, ask questions. Uh, they may have many questions for you, uh, uh, Mr. Mohan Kumar, please. Okay, let me unmute all. Okay, Mr. Mohan Kumar first. Uh, sir, uh, it was a great uh, uh, explanation on marine fungi. Sir, what made you to work on this marine fungi, sir? Of course, we have a lot of uh, other uh, terrestrial people and all <laughs> other things. And what made you to work for so long time on the same topic? Uh, don't you get bored of doing that? Uh, no, no, uh, no. It was, it, was, it was my pleasure to work on it because when I was appointed, uh, as a temporary lecturer in the Department of Biosciences in 1978. Uh, it was a great boon for me because if you travel two to three hours, you reach uh, Western Ghats. If you travel 20 or 30 minutes, you can reach the coastal sand dunes or mangrove very close to Mangalore University. So therefore, uh, initially I took uh, freshwater fungi for about uh, more than a decade. And then after my postdoctoral studies in Canada, I came back and why can't I look for the mangroves and uh, very close to our 
uh, our region like after 12 years or so i thought that it is better i can switch over to uh, and also look for some of them like so research goes like that when we look for marine fungi we also found some uh, legumes like so uh, legumes on the coastal sand dunes so when you see these legumes and we uh, as I said we just inquired the local people they, they said that it is edible and the only thing is we have to be cautious we have to remove the integument of the seeds and such things they mentioned so like that uh, uh, marine fungi also attracted us attracted me and my students and then after that i started guiding students after only 1992 onwards i started guiding my phd students therefore it has uh, uh, now recently we have worked on canopy uh, the mangrove canopy because no one no work is available on mangrove canopy for association of fungi in mangrove canopy so that way i have taken up and then we worked on such type of things it uh, is not so boring see, because see yeah. you see one side of research is looking for new species and phylogeny and such things molecular biology like that another phase of this is looking for the ecological concept ecological views or ecological aspects of marine fungi or mangrove fungi occurring in our own environment so so many occasions i used to tell my students we need not necessarily to go to himalayas and work uh, when you are in mangrove better you work on your own local region like so you can work and you can project what you have in your mind and what you have achieved like instead of see uh, some student somebody I learned that somebody has taken somebody is in Bangalore and they have taken research topic from Himachal Pradesh. So what is the meaning in that? Because going to Himachal Pradesh itself, they will be tired. And and the, we can look for the local situation and then we can extrapolate for the larger global context. Like. So sir, fungarium is there with you, so we can get the old cultures and we can work on no, further. No, no, I don't I, I don't have any cultures. Uh, and some of them I have deposited in the um, IRI. I'm not very sure what is the condition like that. I don't have any cultures, but uh, one can try for culturing. As uh, Sharma was telling, so 50% sea water. So take the sea water and dilute into 50% and then incubate the substrate and see. And after after first time incubation, you need not neither to add sea water. So if you go keep on adding sea water, you are increasing the salt. So therefore, you first time you take 50% sea water, incubate, and then subsequently you add fresh water or distilled water. By that salt content will be same, it will not change. So those are all things we have to think of. So if you take mangrove uh, material, at least you have to work for six months. Incubation is a must. If you take marine wood or coastal sand dune wood, you may have to go up to 18 months or two two weeks or two months of uh, incubation by that you will get a fair idea about what are all the marine fungi devadatta is already aware of that because if you incubate for two months and three months and say these are the aspergillus and vd fungi nobody will believe that because marine mycologists will never believe that, that only aspergillus pencilium is present on, on wood material but it may be a secondary colonizer but real marine fungi grow after six months of incubation and then it may go on and on maybe 18 months and uh, two uh, two years like that okay the way of the figure please okay sachin rajput please uh, sir if you add a different uh, wood from our different species does mm -hmm. the fungus grow the same or uh, it will cease to grow? You mean to say that if you take different types of wood material and incubate it, is it? Is yeah, it yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, sir, yes, sir. See, different type of wood material support different uh, different fungi. Some of them may be common, some of them may be different. Because, for example, so the, a particular wood, it may have a strong uh, this uh, bark. The other may be fragile bark. And as you can see, the difference between uh, uh, the Avicennia abstinalis and Rhizophora micronita. Rhizophora micronita de decompose very fast. Uh, and whereas Avicennia abstinalis will not so fast like. So they, their, their, their chemistry may differ and their uh, physical structures may also differ. 
it's uh, lignocellulose cellulose content and uh, lignin that is uh, the hemicellulose content varies so accordingly the fungus is going to colonize and utilize it so dr sharma mentioned that nematophores also and even seedlings also but seedlings and nematophores are not uh, colonizing much by marine fungi but we can see some of them but nematophores are very fragile and even this uh, seedlings also mango seedlings also uh, little bit fragile like uh, sir one more thing uh, if i want to let's say if i want to culture uh, marine fungi uh, in north india which is uh, far away from sea so can i just collect that wood from that uh, mangrove and autoclave it Surely it can be because because whatever mangrove uh, mangrove wood you are collecting, you can you can carry it for about two three weeks, no problem. Again, you can incubate life. And even marine fungi, marine wood also, uh, the wood also you can uh, collect it and take it to your place, and you can incubate and do that, no problem. But only thing is, so the ascocarps and all they form after six months of incubation. You please keep in touch with Devadatta. He is he has done a lot of work on marine fungi. And he will let you know how ascocarp is going to establish. And once the asco, we stereo microscope, you have to see that, and you have to crush the ascocarp and put it on the antibiotic medium. And then, because a huge number of spores will be released from the ascocarp, and these spores, the germinated spores, has to be transferred to the next. Uh, uh, that is, the subculture has to be done. So these are all some uh, uh, techniques you have to follow. Uh, to isolate them. Once you isolate it, then it is, it is uh, you, you can utilize. Either uh, when you isolate it, it may produce uh, that imperfect state, but not may not be in the perfect state. But when you inoculate same one to the wood material, sterile wood material, it may produce perfect state like that. Okay. So okay. That definite, definitely, you can take mangrove material, keep it even transport two three weeks, no problem. And even marine also even four five months, no problem. Only thing is you have to incubate it in sea water, 50% sea water, and afterwards you replenish uh, this distilled water. If you keep on adding uh, sea water again and again, the salt content increases. Like, okay, Mr. Arvind, please ask a question. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, apart from the the excellent uh, um, uh, work of the fungus, like the marine fungus, is there any drug resistant property noted in the marine fungus? Sir? Uh, because we dump a lot of uh, chemicals and other uh, waste material in the um, in the ocean, so there's any drug resistant property develops in the fungus which is grown in the marine. Sir? So, see, the, with regard to substrate, uh, I have already projected the naturally available substrates. Okay. So, for example, sometimes polyurethane. Okay. Maybe one of the substrates available on the coastal sand dune, or polyurethane may be available in the mangrove ecosystem, or okay. plastics are available on the dunes. Plastics are there in the mangroves, so okay. mostly some of the fungi may utilize it. But but uh, we don't know exactly whether the polyurethane itself will be substrate for growth of fungi, or okay. plastic itself will be the material for growth of fungi. But but if you support with the other nutrients, probably marine fungi may degrade polyurethane. And also okay. plastic may also be degraded by marine fungi, provided okay. if you provide some of the nutrients. OK. Thank you, sir. Arvind, you had a question about drug resistance, right? Uh, yes, sir. So that, that's all. Yeah, if you prefer to include a yeast under a fungi, then okay, you, sir. You, should, you should Google for us, I know, Candida aureus and uh, the drug resistance in that in that particular species from the marine environment okay okay yes, but uh, sir, and follow up with your statement so like uh, when we come across the marine there is the uh, the candida oris or any other species they're not being isolated from the marine but from the coastal area they've been isolated so as being the environmental isolates but so uh, according to you marine is not uh i mean so coastal is not marine uh yeah true sir but in in many cases like aspergillus when we discussed um it comes from the marine source as it's also yeah but you can find aspergillus in the in the deep sea sediments also which is below 11, almost five kilometers below the sea surface so don't okay. underestimate fungi like aspergillus in penicillin okay okay okay, okay, okay thank yeah, you for the that candida also okay dr Devata, last question 
So very nice to hear hear from you, sir. From my PhD days, you have done extensive work from in extensively on West Coast and uh, all over India. Sir, I have a question. Like I haven't worked out on prolonged incubation of mangrove samples, but okay. to my experience, after when we brought the samples from mangroves and incubate them in the plastic containers after um, removing the um, dirt substrate over any barnacles from the mangrove wood samples. But during which we have to examine within one or two months. What happens? I found is like uh, we are getting lot of aspergillus or trichoderma or other uh, marine derived fungi, if we call. So how to tackle this? And you have already reported like during the prolonged incubation, lot of marine marine fungi, obligate marine fungi. So how is it possible for you? Uh, so I have faced such problem when I introduced some of the wood material into our Mangalore Harbor. We took permission and introduced some teak and such type of uh, woody material to the uh, harbor and uh, a lot of barnacles were grown on that. Um, and uh, somehow we managed to incubate it and then find out what are the fungi they are occurring on that. But uh, uh, especially mangrove wood, mangrove, according to my experience, uh, mangrove wood, um, six months of incubation is more than enough because it is wet condition therefore uh, the mycelia will be there and also the, uh, spores may be there and other uh, component of fungi may be there therefore it may grow fast uh, compared to that of uh, woody material collected from the coastal sand dunes coastal sand dunes if you collect it it is dried for a long period and maybe two or three years like that and then it has to be incubated for a long time like so my i advise my students to start working on mangrove wood material and incubate maximum six months or another one or two months more than that. And uh, with one other one, the coastal sand dune has the minimum 18 months. And if you work till 24 months, it will be excellent. Because you know, number of species you may get it, but you may get rare species. Some species are not found in 18 months, 24 months, they are growing up. But the more the amount of problem will be there. As you mentioned, okay, barnacles problem will be there. Especially I faced that when I introduced some wood material in the harbor, harbor region. And we published that paper in Botanica Marina. Probably in 92 or 93, we published a paper on uh, introducing, uh, I, I don't know, maybe 98 or so, we published a paper. It is available in Research Gate. Please study that. Some barnacles were there. Um, but uh, we had some difficulty, but uh, we incubated and then we got some fungi, whatever fungi we got, we have reported. Like. So that's why I made a classification like terrestrial, uh, so-called terrestrial. Uh, we cannot say aspergillus is terrestrial, totally terrestrial because penicillium we may get it in the ocean like. But in conventionally, it is a terrestrial, but it is it will come down because as and when you put it in seawater for some time, uh, some uh, terrestrial fungi will come down and then the marine fungi will take off. Right? And arenicolous fungi always keep increasing, but number is less in you know, arenicolous fungi. Sir, what I found is like after three months, uh, there is a lot amount of uh, periconia or, hum or humicola uh, and some carilospora, other, other genera were vericulina, vericulina analia. These were dominant after like when we incubate for three months. So we are not getting other other different uh, like rare fungi, rare or rare obligate marine fungi. So mm -hmm. that's what my question. Yeah, that is you, you have to look for uh, the duration, you know, first week, second week, third week, fourth week. Every week we have to see that. By that only you will get uh, new species or whatever known one you are going to eliminate and other species you may get. Otherwise, if you keep it for six months and then observe, the, the result, it is of no use. It has to periodically observe. So okay. if you incubate it, let us you give it once in 15 days, you have to look into that. So marine fungi, OK. Uh, coastal wood, you may observe once in a month, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days like that. But Mangrove, you have to look for at least once a week or at least once a once in fortnight. Thank you, Mr. This is my experience. Dr. Roy Charmantes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shuna. Uh, thank you, Professor Chizip, for the very nice and informative talk. I think you, uh, uh, the, your results on the cannabalia as well as the seasonal and the successional community structure studies were very uh, good to see it. 
and in fact you mentioned about the core microflora that is also was uh, very good to know that is there is now people are talking about the gut micro core microflora and all that so these things yeah, yeah, yeah it is a consortium flow. more of consortium okay. rather than rather than single species single species yeah <laughs> and uh, you had very good interesting results on the higher diversity of the mid tide also it was very interesting result to observe that the uh, instead of lower and uh, the higher it's the mid tide that is having the higher diversity as well as the deco decomposition studies of wood and leaf that is the wood is having a more uh, diversity that kind of thing as well as your studies on the sedge that is the cypress and uh, the macrofungal studies that you mentioned i think uh, these, uh, whether it is community st uh, studies or the uh, successional studies, both uh, needs patience and perseverance to mm -hmm. observe kind of thing. That too in the cultural form. These are all cultural studies, not uncultured one. Uh, yes. So yes. it was uh, commendable. And I agree with you, Professor, that you mentioned on the last uh, slide that is the there is a need to reassess the ecological of the fungi with the aspect of the climate change that is happening. So. Yes. Yeah. That's a re, I mean, the new uh, studies, uh, new uh, youngsters can focus on such aspects of their studies. Yeah, yeah. 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 And Thank uh, you. see, we, we can find a lot of micro ecological niches. So yeah. we are forgetting certain things. So, see, all these fungi are very small, and within the small area, they are going to perform functions, and the biogeochemicals are going to operate, not to the larger extent. So therefore, the, the microecological niches are very, very important. Otherwise, we are going to lose. Uh, therefore, we can find new ecological niches, microecological niches, and uh, different ecosystems. All such things are very, very important in marine mycology. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Sridhar. I think those uh, who are from Indian and who follow the Indian mycology, uh, so Professor Sridhar is an uh, institution of mycology himself, and we are indebted for your uh, talk sir thank you so much thank you so much thank for you, joining thank you. thank you thank you very much thank you thank moving you. from uh, professor sridhar to another institution of mycology in himself that is professor uh, surinarayan so professor ts surinarayan a renowned mycologist with uh, 30 years of teaching experience at vivekanand college chennai currently directs the vivekanand institute of tropical mycology and he has made significant contributions to mycology, publishing 145 papers, receiving 6983 citations, and achieving an H index of 43. Recognizing globally, he has led 17 major research projects. Professor Surinayan has received numerous awards and fellowships, holding visiting positions in Kenya, USA, Canada, Germany, and Brazil. His current research focuses on utilizing fungal endophytes for enhancing crops resilience, biofuel production efficiency, and discovering new antibiotics. His collaborative work extends across India, Germany, USA, Finland, and Estonia. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ryan, for joining us for today's uh, seminar on international seminar or marine fungi. Uh, with this, I invite you to deliver your talk, sir. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Dr. Rohit Sharma. Can you all hear me? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Yeah. 